Have any of you been on Pinterest lately? I'm trying to get onto Pinterest and we're pinning a few of our videos and content on there. And lately I've been seeing these landscape pictures. So I thought, let's give it a go today. Hey everyone, my name is Jess. I'm from the Gold Coast Art School. And today I wanna to take you through how you can paint your own landscape painting and talk a little bit about what's going on with your painting as you paint it. Hopefully that will all make sense as we get along, so let's get cracking. You will need watercolour paints for this one, and I want you to pick a watercolour paint that you want to use for the whole piece. This is going to be a monochromatic artwork. That means that it's all one colour. So I'm going to choose blue today, but you could choose red or green. And you'll also need a pencil, probably just a lead pencil, an HB or 2B could use an eraser if you want, but it's not essential. Um, but what is essential is of course a watercolour paintbrush. These are just soft fluffy brushes. They feel quite soft on your skin, not scratchy and hard. And of course some watercolour. It might be a good idea to have um, two little thingies of watercolour here. And of course you need watercolour paper. Please make sure that it is watercolour paper. It doesn't have to be super duper expensive, but just make sure that it is actually going to be able to handle the amount of water we're about to, you know, play with and put on here. So first thing, we need to do some drawing. We need to draw these mountains in there. So we're going to have our mountains going down the page. Um, so towards the top here, I'm going to start if you sort of measure just you can do you can just eyeball i often just eyeball things so about my halfway mark so i'm going to go probably about uh, three quarters up my page and do a bit of a, a light jaggedy mountain range you can have some dips and mountains in there just like that I also am going to put in a little bit of a semicircle shape for whatever that's going to be. It could be the moon or the sun, it really doesn't matter. Next, you want to do some more mountains that are dipping down. So we'll go a little bit further down and some more jagged mountains. They can hit the ones that you've just done and go down. Make sure that it's, it's kind of cool if they're, they're different sort of distances from each other, like the different peaks. Now we've got a range of mountains here on our page. What we're going to be doing is using our chosen color. So in this case, I'm going with blue. I am going to, first of all, we're going to go from light to dark, and this is tonal variations okay you're looking at the lightness and the darkness of something and if you are able to just peer out your window and see some beautiful mountains right now then you are very very lucky but if you have a look at pictures of mountains and landscapes of mountains you'll see that things that are in the distance are a lot lighter the further away that they are the lighter they are and then when they're really quite close up, it gets darker. So we're going to have those different tonal variations in our work. Of course, since our mountains up the top here are going to be quite light, we can use more water compared to pigment. I'm going to pick a blue, add plenty of water, because the idea is that this first top layer up here is going to be really light. Even that right now, is probably too dark. So I'm going to add a bit more water. You might notice that my page is bending a bit because I've got, I'm adding water to it. If you want to avoid that, all you need to do is just use a bit of masking tape around the edge of your page and stick it down onto a board. That's it. It's okay if you go ahead now and apply the next color. We're going to go a little bit darker, same blue. in tone we have our lighter and slightly darker 
that's what you want. So now we have this whole big mountain range in here and it's not so bad actually if you've got like a big gap like this because we can add trees we can start to add a little bit more interest here well, let's go in now and remember we're trying to get a little bit darker as we go so now you can probably start using a bit more pigment with your picture something else to keep in mind when you're painting with watercolors is that they tend to dry a little bit lighter than when you first put them down. So your colors are going to change as they dry. This next one here, because I've got a little bit of, I've got a bit of this and a bit of that, um, I think that because this bit here is actually a little bit behind this mountain range, I'm gonna do this one first and then this one is going to be a little bit darker. If you do double dip and you go into other colors, like darker colors of the same um, shade, like if you're using blue, then you just go into another type of blue that's a bit darker. Uh, just keep in mind what you're doing because now if you wanna add trees and some interesting things, they all kind of need to be that same color. That means that any kind of trees and things that I add later need to be a mix between the two blues that I'm using right now. I think that's my catchphrase for today. Keep it in mind. Dip your head in and then dip out again. <laughs> We've got lots of videos on our channel featuring this guy. Nice. He can do more um, full on videos compared to me. <laughs> so we've got more of those on our channel if you want to check them out. I can add some trees here in the foreground. And again, we can just go dab, 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 dab. That's for the kids. Again, if we're making impressions of trees, they're not actual, like legit, full on, hyper realistic trees here. It's not about that. add if you want to maybe some birds that are in the background there if you've got a thin brush then that might be a little bit easier remember if that something is lighter that's mean it's further in the background so you could have a mix of darker and lighter birds there we have it this is such an excellent activity to do to explore watercolor using one color using different values, painting this beautiful landscape here with all these little birdies and trees and things. It's so much fun. I hope you get to do it too. Let me know what you think down in the comments below. If you've got any more ideas that you'd like to explore, let me know. And also don't forget to give this a little bit of a like because it's free and it really does help us out. I've got to rush because my battery is flashing at me and I've got to go. So I will catch you all next week. Have a fantastic rest of the week and I'll see you later. Bye.